Good morning and uh, welcome to Sunday the 18th of April's worship service today. Um, if you read your emails, you would think that uh, Kevin would be doing today, but uh, it's me as Kevin has asked me to step in um, to cover this week. So just a quick run through of all the participants today. <clears throat> we have Mike who will be presiding, Bill will bring us the reading and Michael will provide us the thoughts around the Lord's Supper. And as you can see, I am today's host. Um, as for the order of service, well, we will begin with, I will call upon the Lord and then have a prayer. We will then have two songs, Rock of Ages and The River Is Here. After that, we will have the reading, which is from Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to chapter 9, verse 1. After the reading, we'll have Worthy of the Lamb and then the Lord's Supper. And to close out the service, we will sing Because He Lives, Be Still My Soul, and have a closing prayer. But at this time, I will hand the service over to Mike. Good morning, everyone. Glad you could uh, join us today, and I pray that God has blessed you this, this past week. Appreciate that many of us are um, looking forward to coming out of lockdown and be able to circulate a bit more with friends, albeit outside at the moment. Um, we can begin to travel as well to see one another, and hopefully, Within a month or two, we might uh, begin to think about getting back to Hivitz to worship there together. Uh, and it would be lovely to see everyone again. During the week, we were uh, having our normal uh, sort of online Bible study. And something came up that was, um, was quite important, and it was about how to please the Lord. Uh, there's a passage of scripture in Ephesians chapter 10. It says, uh, determine what pleases the Lord. And that word determine means to, to prove or to test, to work out what it is that pleases God. This is an instruction that Paul gives us in Ephesians chapter uh, 5, verse 10. Well, in thinking about that, we discussed it at length, and in thinking about that, the scriptures help us in this very passage. Um, it says, has not, have nothing to do with the unfruitful actions that darkness produces. Instead, expose them for what they are. And in verse 15, it says, So then, be careful how you live. This is how we please God. It's not just, um, you know, because we're children of God or titles that we might have, you know, that we are Christians, etc. But rather, what pleases God is how, we, is how we live as his children. And so, just as we would be concerned for the way our own children behave um, in, in the world, and also, so he says then, so therefore, be careful how you live. So there's one way of pleasing God. And he describes um, how that life should be lived. And then finally, in verse 19, he says, then you will recite to one another psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You will sing and make music to the Lord with your hearts. So it appears that we need to prepare for worship in the sense of living our lives in a righteous and holy way that pleases God. And uh, Paul says that because of that, it prepares us to sing uh, spiritual songs and hymns in our hearts unto the Lord, to one another and unto the Lord uh, in our hearts. And so it's something to consider uh, when we, as we prepare for worship today. There's a, a couple of thoughts I just wanted to share with you. Um, you know, come around the table and it says, examine yourself as we come around the table. Um, you know, how, how, are we, how are we behaving in our lives and towards one another uh, and to those who are uh, strangers outside? How do we present ourselves? And this is very important to God. He, he is pleased with those who, who live out lives that are uh, righteous and holy in his sight. Um, our first song then, as we prepare for worship is I will call upon the Lord and will call upon no other. Uh, we will listen only to the voice of Jesus as he, as he speaks to us through his word and as we understand him. And so let's sing together, uh, I will call upon the Lord and then I'll lead the opening prayer after that. Let's bring us together in our opening prayer. 
Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we thank you that as your children, we can come before you today and to offer up our heartfelt thanks and our heartfelt worship towards you. We pray that we'll be encouraged today from the singing that we can join in with the words of the songs and with the words of exhortation we hear. We pray that you'll bless us in our lives, Father, and lead us by your Spirit that it might be truly a blessing to one another and to bring honour and glory to your holy and precious name. Accept our worship this morning, Father, we ask, ask this humbly and ask it as we bow the, the knee to you and honour your son Jesus as we come around the table today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next uh, two songs are, uh, are The Rock of Ages and The River is Here. You know, as Christians, we need a strong foundation for our lives, not shifting sand. We're the shifting sand, but Jesus is the rock that we stand upon to give solidity to our lives and a strong sense of direction as we travel uh, through uh, to heaven. We will sing the first song, Rock of Ages, and then immediately after that, the, the river is here, suggesting that God's blessing flows to us by his spirit. And so let's sing these two songs uh, together now, Rock of Ages, to start with. A uh, wonderfully uplifting uh, song. Um, we're going to turn to uh, our scriptures now, and our Bible reading today is brought by Bill, and it's Mark chapter 8, verse 22, and goes into chapter 9, verse 1. So we'll ask Bill now to give us that reading. This is a uh about seeing and understanding. And many in previous chapters had seen Jesus' miracles but failed to acknowledge him and understand his ministry. The blind man was given sight, but he had to also be given understanding. Peter was given understanding as to who Jesus was, but he, had, he and the disciples had a lot to learn about Jesus' ministry and his kingdom. In both cases, they were told not to tell others about their revelation, whether physical or spiritual. There was more to come. Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to uh, chapter 9, verse 1. They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led them out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, can you see anything? And the, the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes and he looked intently and, and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home saying, to even go into the village. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah, and some others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered them, you are the Messiah. And he sternly told, ordered him, them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciple, they rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you're setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. 
he called the crowds with his disciples, said to them, if you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will be also ashamed when he comes in his glory of his Father with his holy angels. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God has come with power. Thank you, Bill, for, for that reading. Um, our next song is uh, Worthy is the Lamb. I chose this because obviously we're coming into the Lord's Supper now. And, um, you know, Jesus is called the Lamb of God uh, for a specific reason. And that was that he was our Passover Lamb. He is the, the true, unblemished, perfect and sinless Lamb of God and is, is therefore worthy, um, as the book of Revelation teaches us, and they sing that in heaven, as worthy as the Lamb sits upon the throne. So our Passover lamb has been sacrificed, doesn't need to be sacrificed ever again, thankfully. And we come around the table today to, to worship God and give, give us thanks. And uh, so let's uh, hand over to Michael now, and he's going to lead our thoughts around the, the table today. Good morning, brethren. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-three 23 onwards, it reads, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. Brethren, it is important to note that it is Jesus Christ's broken body that he agreed to be given to sinners like you and I. Also that the sacrifice he made with his life has been a reconciliation of wicked and sinful enemies of God. So in effect, what we do as this Lord's Supper is specifically remembering Jesus Christ on the cross. So brethren, as we take this communion today, let us picture Jesus Christ wearing the thorns of crown. Let us picture how blood was flowing down his cheeks. Let us picture his arms stretched wider on the crucifixion tree and held by nails. Let us picture his legs being nailed to this cross. This man's sin was that he wanted to rid the sins of this world. Shall we pray for the bread? Oh, Father in heaven, thank you for your love. Thank you for the nails that pierced your hands, oh, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the price you paid. Because your worthiness is beyond our comprehension. As we are about to take this bread, which is a representation of the body that you sacrificed for us, may we continue to remember. May we continue to remember the sacrifice. May we continue to remember that you seated up our high on the throne. May we continue to remember that we 
we, we, we should be living lives worthy of this sacrifice. And may you continue to build in us a fountain that can only be controlled by you, O oh God. Please be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 11.25, it continues to read, Then in the same way after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we are grateful unto you once again. As we take this wine, which represents the precious, the holy blood of your son, Jesus Christ, may we continue to live lives that are worthy of this prize. May we continue to be the salt and the light of this world. May all and sundry know that we truly are your servants. And may every evil forces that are meant for our harm turn to our good whilst we praise your name. O oh God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That uh, we have been blessed as we've bowed our heads together around the table today. Our next song is Because He Lives. This is very appropriate. Um, straight after the, the supper, the death of Jesus, we can think of his resurrection. And perhaps that's why the Lord uh, put the first day of the week for our breaking of bread, because it's on the, we can remember the death of Jesus on the resurrection day, bringing it all together. But let's sing together Because He Lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Jesus rose from the dead to give us confidence in the future, to still, to still our anxious hearts. Our next song is Be Still My Soul for that very reason. So we don't have to worry about tomorrow, to place our souls into his care, and in fact, our entire lives. So let's sing together, uh, Be Still, My Soul, and then I'll lead the closing. Sorry, uh, Bill will lead the closing prayer straight after that. Lord, we... Thank you for the many blessings we have because of your son and his sacrifice for us, Lord. And we know that there are times where we'll feel alone, but we know that you're always there for us and with us, so long as we submit to you, Lord, and are obedient. Help us to realize that we have to pick up our cross daily, and, and there'll be a certain amount of suffering and rejection in the way that Jesus was, was also rejected. But we know that we cannot pay the price for, for our sins, that Jesus did that, it, to free us, Lord, that we might walk with you, not just in this life, but for eternity. We thank you that you are the, your son is a rock that we can build our life on, Lord, and we have guidance from you that we can walk the straight and holy path, Lord, that you have prepared for us, Lord, to walk. We thank you, Lord, for this hope that we have in Jesus and the fellowship that we can have with each other and, and with him because of his sacrifice, Lord. Help us to encourage each other and to be faithful, Lord. We thank you for all that you do for us each day, even the many things that we do not seem to recognize, Lord. 
and help us to give honour to you in every way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.